we have covered initially that nucleus in case of plant cells is actually shifted to one side wherein in case of animal cells it takes the middle position of the cell now exactly the nucleus structure will be it lies in the center of the cell and how its structure will be if you are calling it as a nucleus we are talking about a eukaryotic cell the cell which has a properly developed nucleus what is the meaning of the term of properly developed nucleus nucleus which lies in the center is almost this in shape now i am magnifying this nucleus here basically if this entity has got four features then it is known as a nucleus the nucleus will have a nuclear membrane and that nuclear membrane is double layer it is double layer so the first identification is that there is this nuclear membrane the second one it will have nuclear pores in it the membrane will have pores in it and it has this round structure dark structure inside the nucleus we call it as nucleolus it also has thread like structures in it we call it as chromatin network or in some of the books you will find them as written as chromatin threads of course the liquid that is present inside the nucleus is known as nucleoplasm nucleus plasm is nucleoplasm the liquid that is present inside the liquid that is present inside the nucleus is known as nucleoplasm so if the entity has got these main four features in it it has got the nucleus membrane the nuclear core it has the chromatin network inside it has got the liquid that is nucleoplasm and nucleolus then we are going to call it as nucleus and once we have this nucleus we have heard of only these terms chromosomes what is this chromatin network or chromatin thread remember most of the time the cell is not dividing when it is not dividing the chromosomes are in the shape of Yes, ma'am. You are not audible. Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma okay. Good to go. I am taking it again. No problem. We have started okay. off heading of this nucleus. Nucleus. We started understanding, mm -hmm. and that entity that lies exactly in the center, in the center of the animal cell, and at the corner. we call it as nucleus in prokaryotic in eukaryotic cells in prokaryotic cells we call it as a nucleoid prokaryotic cell will be of course two basic categories are there in that today bacteria and protozoa in a eukaryotic cell in a eukaryotic cell something which we call as nucleus should have these entities it should have double layered nuclear membrane with pores we call them as nuclear pore it should have chromatin network the threads it should have nucleolus at the down body the center and nucleoplasm the liquid of the nucleus cell carp plasm in cytoplasm the jelly like substance inside the cell membrane 
here outside the nucleus and inside the cell membrane lies the cytoplasm where all cell organelles will live same way inside the nucleus the liquid is present and that jelly like liquid we call as nucleoplasm so if the entity has these structures we call it as a proper nucleus this nucleus contains chromatin network actually when the cell is not dividing which happens most of the time when the cell is not dividing that remains in the form of chromatin network chromatin network takes the shape of chromosomes when the cell starts dividing whenever the cell starts dividing that time when the cell starts dividing that time this chromatin thread or chromatin network takes the shape of chromosomes how do we identify the chromosomes they may have two threads joined together these two threads are known as chromatids chromatids and they are joined together at a point known as centromere the point of joining we have heard of the terms genes and dna our basic genetic transcript or you can say the information how my eye color will be how my skin color will be how much of the height will i have all this information is stored in coded form in short coded form in dna dna deoxyribonucleic acid so dna basically forms genes you can say the functional form functional form of dna is known as genes and these genes are very much essential and where do they lie genes you can say they are present on the chromosomes they are present on the chromosomes remember that once again i am repeating it it's very important to understand that a nucleus will have these four regions and more specifically we are concerned about the chromatin network chromatin network basically condenses and takes the shape of chromosomes chromosomes will have this structure it has two sister chromatids joined together at the centromere these chromosomes have on them these small strands they are known as genes genes are made up of dna so now we have this idea where exactly this dna is present dna molecule lies on the chromosomes you can say dna molecules join together and they form genes dna forms genes genes are located on chromosomes chromosomes will be there in the form of chromosome only when the cell divides only when the cell divides otherwise they will be there in the form of chromatin thread chromatin network so basically the cell will have two major roles of nucleus which two major roles of nucleus are there one the first role of the nucleus will be it acts as the control center of the cell control center means it is the brain of the cell it commands all the activities inside the cell second important feature is as we have just covered that dna is present inside the nucleus the main second role is that it helps in inheritance means passing on of characters from one generation to the next of course we know that as it happens in case of unicellular organisms when the nucleus divides it results into daughter cells amoeba for example single amoeba 
splits into two. First of all, the nucleus divides and then the cytoplasm, and that results into two daughter amoeba. What does it mean? It means that with this particular nucleus, reproduction is also associated in unicellular organisms. After completing all about it, let's recall that those cells, specifically the plant cell and the animal cell, which have properly developed nucleus, like the one which I had drawn on the board, they are known as eukaryotes. E U goes for true, carrion goes for nucleus. Those cells which have two nucleus, they will be counted in the category of eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are those cells which do not have a proper nucleus. Their genetic material lies just like that here or there in the cell. Like here in this diagram, we have a prokaryotic cell in the center of it. As I have told you previously also, on the basis of this discussion, you may have the function of nucleus as a question. Diagram of prokaryotic cell, three important labelings, the plasma membrane, the cell wall, nucleoid is the utmost important labeling in this diagram. To my question again. And on the basis of the nucleus discussion only, the differences between prokaryote and eukaryote. Two mark question, four small differences. Many a times it has been repeated in the examinations. After this nucleus, the next we are supposed to understand is about cytoplasm. Cytoplasm, when we are talking about, that basically is present outside the nucleus membrane and inside the plasma membrane. And this jelly-like liquid contains all the contents of the cell, including the dissolved substances, and it definitely will have many cell organelles. Cell organelles. What is the meaning of the term cell organelle? Once you are saying an organ, how will we define an organ? Organ is a part of the body which performs a particular function. For example, stomach digestion in case of human beings, for example, leaf in case of plant performing photosynthesis. Same way, those are bigger, so we call them as organ. These are small components. Cell itself is very small. You have to see through a compound microscope only. So the parts of the cell which are performing a particular function for the cell, they are known as cell organelles. So these cell organelles which we are going to study in our chapter, they may be ER, they may be mitochondria, like those. Many of them, cell organelles. This definition is clear to us that cell organelle is actually a membrane bound component inside the cell performing a particular function. Now, Bacho, this thing we are supposed to keep in mind very clear that these membrane, membrane, dynamic, we are repeating, they are so important, they keep the cell alive. Viruses do not have a cell membrane. And therefore, they lie on the boundary line of dead and living. Why this virus, this COVID virus is doing hell of a havoc all over the world? It has not been controlled. Reason is that this virus is actually a retrovirus. And what is this retrovirus? Retrovirus is a virus that keeps on changing its configuration. We can understand it in this way that this is a type of lock. This retrovirus is a type of lock which keeps on changing its configuration, its numbers on its own. 
so you cannot find its key a proper key a proper way to cure it moreover if an if any of the cell will not have a cell membrane how will you kill it something which is living we can kill it but if certain things are not living we cannot kill them so that is the main reason why it is creating after aids this is the next entity which has created hell of a damage all over the world still it is continuing of course we are positive we are going to take over it also in our coming few days coming down to the next that is the cell organelles in cell organelles of course they are membrane bound components of the cell performing particular functions for the cell for example endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus lysosomes mitochondria plastids vacuoles each individual cell organelle performs a particular function let us have a raw idea where these cell organelles are located in the cell just next to the nucleus here we know that this is the nucleus and this of course is the nucleolus next to the nucleus immediately next to the nucleus or you can say sticking to the nuclear membrane you know very well that nucleus is double membrane this you please keep in mind certain organelles will be double membrane some organelles will be single membrane and here we are understanding it in this way of course nucleus has a double membrane and just above the nucleus we uh, call them as like vesicles somewhat like you can understand that they are in the shape of like banana hollow banana you can say that that shape it will be next to the nucleus it is and they are present like this next to the nucleus this what i am drawing is actually dr the endoplasmic reticulum next to the nucleus lies endoplasmic reticulum location you should know there are some er which have a rough surface we call them as rough endoplasmic reticulum those which do not have these rough surfaces we call them as smooth er smooth endoplasmic reticulum rough is rough because of the presence of these small granules on it ribosomes wherever either it is on er or it is separately in the cell whenever you are talking about er endoplasmic reticulum rough means it is going to synthesize proteins and smooth er is going to synthesize lipids lipids means fats so ser is associated with the synthesis of lipids rer is associated with the synthesis of proteins remember one thing kids protein synthesis means most of the major important compounds needed in the body they are proteins all biological catalysts that means the enzymes hormones they are proteins moreover this ser has got a very very crucial role in liver what does it do it detoxifies the poison poison and of course the drugs drugs here i mean that is on the medicines that we are taking excess of it that is removed with the help of ser smooth endoplasmic reticulum moreover as you can see the structure it provides skeleton that means the shape to the cell you can say these channels they provide shape to the cell skeletal you can say in some of the books you will find it written as framework to the cell okay 
above this RER or SER, above the endoplasmic reticulum, lies another stack of banana shape. And we call them as Golgi complex. Just next to next to ER, endoplasmic reticulum. Not attached to it. Like ER is exactly attached to the layer of the nucleus. Not that way. But yes, it is present just above it. We call it as Golgi. Golgi complex in case of animal cell. In plant cell, it is reduced in size and we call them as dictyosomes there. Structure, first of all, we are understanding that we take all these organs one by one. Next to the Golgi, this small ball that we are seeing, this is nothing but this is actually lysosomes. Lysosomes or suicidal tags. These three are actually interconnected. So therefore we should know their location. So specifically starting out from nucleus. Next to the nucleus ER. Next to the ER we have Golgi. And of course, Golgi will have these small vesicles coming out, we call them as lysosomes. Mitochondria and vacuoles will be present at some other sites in the cell itself. But specifically, these are interconnected. How the question is framed in the exam for the heading of ER? They may ask us, write the structure and function of ER. That means this question I am going to give you today in your assignment. The structure will be, we are going to write it from here. The endoplasmic reticulum is a large network of membrane bound tubes and sheets, vesicles. There are two types, rough ER and SER, smooth ER. Functions now. Here itself, they are saying, the manufacture of protein takes place at RER and SER manufactures the fat molecules or lipids. These proteins and lipids basically help in the process of membrane synthesis. And this process is known as biogenesis. The question comes, is the cell preparing all the lipids and proteins only for the formation of cell membrane? No. There are enzymes synthesized inside, there are hormones synthesized inside, which are sent outside the cell for their functioning. But yes, of course, some of them, they do help in the building up of the cell membrane. And of course, this process is actually known as biogenesis. Membrane biogenesis. Moving ahead, see here in this diagram itself, we can see the structures next to the nucleus. This is the nucleus they had indicated for animal cell. Next to the nucleus lies this rough ER. Rough ER. And smooth ER is also there. Even smooth ER can also be next to the nucleus itself, no problem. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Above then, of course, will be present the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi complex. And this Golgi complex definitely releases these small ball-like structures. They are known as lysosomes, which carry lots and lots of enzymes in them. Mitochondria, again a double-layered membrane. Nucleus double membrane. ER double. Mitochondria double. 
Golgi double, but lysosome single layer. So here, next we are supposed to take up. It says the functions of ER one and two. Those two functions we already have just now covered. Rough ER synthesizes protein. Smooth ER. Smooth ER synthesizes lipids. But of course, important two more functions. One function of ER is to serve as channels for the transport of material between various regions of the cytoplasm or between cytoplasm and the nucleus. So once something is present like channel here, it is going to pass on to certain things that are synthesized inside the nucleus to the outside. And of course, from one place of the cytoplasm to the next. Channels, it acts like channels for transport. Another important function is it acts as 